a unicorn on my head, I can go do long range. I'm gonna go miles and miles. Fantastic. But I do look a bit silly, don't I? Well, <laughs> enough joking around, guys. These are the death ray antennas. Um, and I picked up a set from a chap called Henrik who makes these and sells them from Sweden. But um, before I jump ahead, mine are red. Why are mine red? Well, because I didn't like the black colour so I spray painted mine. Um, I think they look pretty cool and I'm going to stand out at the field for better or for worse. <laughs> but um, So there you go guys, a couple of close-ups. This is a five turn helical antenna designed to strap onto the front of your DJI goggles. Um, they left hand circular polarized, all the parts are 3D printed, pretty well tuned and reasonably good quality and um, all up I'm quite happy with the fit on the radio. But um, we have a couple of things to think about. A. Do they work? B. Are they any better than the iFlight crystals? Because I know some of you will be going, oh, why would I need that thing when I can have that thing? Well, let, let's go into a few details. So for now, I hope you've all seen that because I'm putting that down because it's just one too many things in the way. So a helical antenna, what does it do for you? First of all, helicals are one of the oldest antennas pretty much in the FP market. They are circular polarized and they have always worked well. The biggest downside, they are bulky. And if I show you again, yes, they are bulky. But they are also one of the easiest antennas for Joe Average to make. And as a result, this is ultimately why Henrik has done this, because the effort of making it is kind of a whole lot simpler and they work. So at a rough summary, you know, easy to make, kind of, you can do it with a 3D printer and easy to tune. Now, that all stands up to a good recipe for good success. Now, Henrik sells these in three different versions. He has a three turn, a five turn and a seven turn. And if I check the specs here, just to give you a rough idea, a three turn has basically a nine and a half dB gain, the five turn has an 11.7 dB gain, and the seven turn has a 13 dB gain. Um, but obviously getting all that gain comes at a cost. The longer and the more turns you have, the less your beam width is gonna be. So you gotta kind of play a balancing act depending on how and what you do when you fly. So at a base level, the three turns gonna give you roughly 170 to 180 degrees. That's, that's pretty much our tier of high gain coverage, but you can't go kind of too far out. It, it's kind of, you, you've got limited range with that, you know, so you get the wider beam, but you don't go as far. The five turn on the other hand has 130 degrees, which is a little bit more conservative, okay, but it kind of, you can go just that much further. And then the seven turn version, well, that can go even further, 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 and it, but it's down to like sort of 100 degrees. So you're kind of, you're losing width of flying sight, but you can go further. Now, in the end, your choice as to what you go for is ultimately gonna come down to how you as a person choose to fly. And of course, also where you fly. So, and this kind of while I'm, while I'm on that topic about beam width, something that has to be understood with FPV and anyone who flies long range knows this. The beam gets wider and wider as you go further out. So the conceptual idea that a very high gain antenna with say a 40 degree beam width is a problem is actually not quite right because the further I go, if, if you've got a beam and it's going out like that and over here is say not degree one, basically I'm um, 100 meters wide. And over here at 13 kilometers with a 40 degree beam, I don't know what the maths is, but that's probably five kilometers wide. So actually, even though you can be on say a seven turn antenna with a narrow beam width, if you are a long range flyer, you've got a little bit large amount of sky you can fly in and still be in that beam. And um, th this is especially true for things like these, because with the five turn, 
you know, the nature of the bean patterns, you kind of, you get a big donut bubble and then a bean coming out. So with these, I could effectively fly quite happily, probably within 500 meters all around me, but have a long push out. Um, and that's a reasonably good proposition. Um, I don't actually know what the beam width is on these. Um, I've never checked, but I imagine it's not terribly dissimilar to maybe the three turn version, just based on the performance of them, which is equally good. So um, why should I choose these over these? Well, it's at the end of the day, it's going to come down to personal choice again, as these things always do. So these are super compact. You plug them on and they are there. But the downside, once your iFlight antenna is on and screwed in, you kind of lose the option to easily change anything without removing the entire faceplate. Whereas if you used something like these, you could unscrew these and then I could just pop these little true RC ones depending on where I'm flying. So it, it can really be a case of this is easier for me to handle on a day-to-day -day basis. If I choose to do a longer range flight, I pop my longer range antennas on and off I go. Whereas if I'm just flying quads in the park, I can put my other antennas on, which are more kind of local and better for that. And it works. So there's a whole lot of, it's a personal choice, but they're pretty cool and they do work well. Now, I think it's worth noting, I know that Henrik has apparently tested these out to the 13 kilometer mark with a very good bit rate. I don't have that sort of opportunity at this point to even attempt to do that sort of distance. A, I've got nowhere I can do it, and B, it's just long range isn't truly my thing. What I'm more interested in is what is the object penetration like with running higher gain antennas. Now, I, I think by object penetration, what I'm getting down to is that if I were to fly behind, say, three sets of houses whilst a kilometre away and maintain a signal, could I do it with those little stubby antennas on here, or could I do it with these antennas? And the answer is quite simple. I can do it with these, but I can't do it with the stubbies. And that comes down to the ability of the antenna, which has a much higher gain, to just suck enough of that signal that you can push through all that rubbish. Now, <laughs> these do a very good job of that. I, I did a performance test of this the other day, just flying, you know, a little four inch quad, flying behind objects with and without. Um, I, I'm not gonna actually bore you with showing you that footage, simply because, you know, flying a quad up and down a road doesn't really show you anything. Um, what you'll have to do is take my word for it and um, I'm also not unsurprised by this because I did similar tests with my DJI antenna tracker which I've listed in the um, cards on this video and the result of running a directional high gain antenna definitely pays dividends you will get the ability to fly further and more behind just the general crap you know that we fly through without the bitrate dropping on your um, DJI goggles and that's a good thing, because it means that you maintain a better signal in sketchy environments. Now, I think these are pretty great. I like them. I would say possibly I look a little bit... In fact, I think someone popped up on Facebook a picture of um, the exterminate thing. What is it? It's the Doctor Who exterminate, exterminate. And he popped up a picture which kind of summed up exactly what these make you look like. And I, I had to chuckle at that. But... um. Yeah, they um, they do have a funny look, but I quite like them. And I think the performance of them from everything I've done out flying says they are very good. The build quality, considering it's a 3D printed type semi-professional job, is pretty good. Henrik's done a good job and I think they are well worth the money. Um, and as you can see from this picture over here, he does them in a range, they come in black, they, they look reasonably pretty, they're nice. So uh, certainly I would suggest pop onto long range hooligans, get in touch with um, Henrik. I'll pop a link to 
a post on our long range hooligans shortly about this i'm sure henrik will at some point set up a shop for this because facebook ain't really the ideal place to do the trading of this sort of thing but um yeah give them a try if you're into pushing a little bit of range or just want some more object penetration these antennas are pretty decent and overall i'm happy with the performance yeah hey guys enjoy cheers <laughs>